Welcome to another video. In this video, I wanted to show my daily breakfast routine. <laughs> Just kidding. But I did want to show how I use and utilize some of my pottery because I don't often show the finished product. And by now, you probably realize that this week I'm talking all about plates. Hello, there I am. <laughs> Plates get a little bit of a bad rep, and I think rightfully so. They constantly warp, they constantly crack, you have to do a lot of compressing, you have to be very mindful in your technique when making these, and also when firing them. They can warp in a bisque, they can warp in a glaze, lots of issues with them. They're honestly one of my least favorite things to make, and this is coming from the guy that makes pottery for a living, which is something that I love to do. So I'm gonna stop complaining now. Like with everything, I'm just weighing these into identical balls and wedging them up super well. I use about a pound and three quarters for each of these. These are share plates. So at the end, they're gonna measure out to about eight inches after they're fully fired and glazed. I find it really helpful to use a softer clay for making plates because it's going to be that much easier to manipulate it, to flatten it out. We're not going for height here, so we don't have to worry about pulling up walls and oversaturating the clay or having the walls be too thick or too thin. It's just a wide base, a big old diameter, a big old flat base for eating whatever you're going to eat. So softer clay is your friend here. So after I've gotten my bowl, nice and centered. I just use my fists to flatten them out and I kind of have this double fist method where I'm using my right hand <laughs> as my bottom and my left hand as my brace and I'm kind of using that side knuckle part of my hand to just drag the clay across the wheel head. Maybe one of the hardest parts about making a plate is having your base be really flat. You want a nice flat surface area on the bottom there. You don't want it to like dip in towards the middle because then you're kind of dealing with a bowl shape and it's going to have thin spots. You want just a nice consistent flat base and this method can make that difficult. I know some people will use like a pin, like a rolling pin to flatten it out. This is the way that I do it and what works best for me. Um, I like these to have a really thin base because I don't do a lot of trimming and in order to check the thickness of my base I'll use my needle tool and this is a handy little trick not only for plates but for any of your pots. I liked that thickness so I will continue on. Now that I have it nice and flattened out I'm using my finger making sure my sponge is really wet because I don't want it to stick and get thrown off center and just pushing the clay towards the middle to thicken up that rim and give myself something to pull and create a sort of lip. I like my plates to have a little bit of a lip to them, almost like a slightly bullish aspect because some food is saucy and if they're completely flat, your food's just gonna be flying off the plate and going all over the place. Always kind of thinking about the function of these things as I'm making them. And there's a lot of trial and error to that. So yeah, I'm just continuing to pull out that lip until I have the shape that I want. This angle is kind of helpful. You can see the way my fingers are working here, just creating that undercut and getting it somewhat low because I want just a nice gentle curve from the flatness of my base up to the lip of my plate. You can't really tell because you can't see my face, but at this point I'm not really focused on my fingers. I'm staring at my gauge, getting the plate to the diameter that it needs to be. So these are all kind of consistent. Using this metal rib here, this is such a crucial part. You want to be applying a decent amount of pressure to really compress that bottom to avoid any cracks. Also removing the slip and getting it nice and flat and nice and even see just how much prettier and how much more finished that already looks. Just doing some finishing touches here using my finger to smooth it out and accentuate that curve, cutting it off that bat to allow these things to dry and remove that suction that I had on there. Since there's so much surface area on the base of these, they have a tendency to just stick right back to where they were. And uh, yeah, there's the, there's the profile of the plate. There's me showing it off. Um, 
like I was just saying though, at this point, these have dried for at least a day. They dry so slowly, which I like because I don't want them to warp or crack. So slow drying is definitely your friend. But since that there is so much surface area, you can see my wire dragging across the bottom there. They have a tendency just to stick right back down even after you cut them off the wheel. So I like to cut them off again, and then I'll use this bubble wrap to avoid any sinking that might happen once I flip them over. I like to trim plates on a bat because they're so low to the wheel head that they're gonna be that much harder to remove and you're gonna have a lot more of a risk of kind of distorting the shape, removing it from the wheel head and removing it from your bat. So I just use that flip over method to help me with that. This is really the only time I ever use bat pins. I stick my bats to my wheel head when I'm throwing with a pad of clay, but bat, bat pins are super helpful when I'm trimming these plates. I know that there's other methods I could be using to this. I know that they create these sticky bats nowadays, which maybe would be helpful, but this is just the way I do it, and it works for me. I'm looking at the inside there because whenever I'm trimming a pot, I'm thinking about matching my interior to my exterior, where the excess clay is, and what I need to be removing. When you have a pot that is very low profile, like a plate, it's going to make tap centering a lot more difficult. I like to give these a lip as well and make them sort of bullish so I can tap center them and it just speeds up the process a little bit. I wet my bats to make sure that my plate's already suctioned and kind of sticking to it, but I also use those lugs because there's nothing worse than trimming a piece and it flying off mid-trim. And yeah, now I'm just removing this excess clay using my little loop tool here and I don't trim a foot ring into these. I was kind of saying earlier that I like to throw them with a very thin base because I love the profile of a flat plate without a foot ring. A lot of these are going to be in a restaurant setting and foot rings have a tendency to chip and plates get tossed around. They get used all the time, they get thrown into dishwashers, whatever it maybe um, I just want these to last for as long as they can. So I'm just following what the inside of this plate is doing and matching that to the outside, kind of rolling my trim tool over that hard edge and creating a nice round bottom. Going back over it with my rib to smooth out any grog or sand that might have gotten lifted up while I was trimming. I'm not too worried about the trimming lines or even the throwing lines. I'm just worried about kind of leaving a nice burnish and getting any of that grog back into the clay. So yeah, the, the trimming process doesn't take very long, which I like. The less trimming I need to do, the more efficient I can be and the faster I can get these things done. Cleaning off any little scrap bits of clay that I don't want to be sticking into the base of my plate. And again, using my little flip over method here, kind of tapping that top to remove the suction. And there it kind of is, there's my plate. Once I set these back down onto these bats that they'll dry on, I'll go back over the base of it and make sure it is flat, just using my hand to like very gently squish it down. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment with any questions below and stay tuned.